Well, he did it. So Elon Musk and XAI, the company behind Grok, as promised, open sources Grok. On March 11th, Elon Musk said, this week we will open source Grok. It didn't happen for a long, long time. They really waited till, well, today is Sunday. A lot of speculation on whether or not it was going to happen. And today, Grok posts this, waits in bio. So if you go to kind of the bio, the profile page, there's a torrent torrent link you can use to download it. So you need some sort of torrent software and then just this, and you're going to be able to download Grok. So what does that look like? So it's 314 billion parameters, MOE, mixture of experts, eight experts, and it's not RLHF. So 314 billion parameters. So it's the base model. It's not fine tuned. So it will say shocking things if you ask for them, not for the faint of heart. It's eight experts, mixture of experts published under the Apache 2.0 license. XAI has code on GitHub. I'll put these links down in the show notes and shout out to Andrew here. I'll post his profile as well because he looks like kind of did a deep dive and put together some stuff that's uh, useful if you wanted to know more about it or if you wanted to download it and uh, spin it up yourself. So basically with these LM models, you have the weights. So the weights of the neural network. So kind of after you train them on large amounts of data, their brains, their digital brains, their neural networks, you know, align themselves a certain way, similar to how we have neural connections in our brains. That's determined by weights among other things, but that's not the entirety of it. You also have the architecture. So that's all the stuff that kind of connects it and makes it work. So as far as I can tell, I mean, this is the whole shebang. This is the whole thing, open sourced, completely laid bare. Apache license means commercial use, personal use, whatever use, right? If I understand correctly, by the way, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And also just a quick disclaimer. I mean, this got released like 30 minutes ago. So it is very possible that some of the things that we read here or go over, they, they, they might be incorrect. So we'll definitely do a follow-up video later, kind of making sure that everything's correct. But just keep this in mind. So when I'm recording this, this this thing is like 30 minutes old and it's it's still uh, developing. And so they're saying, so unbelievably based of Grok's team, code of conduct, you know, there's no spiel about ethics, morals, whatever, right? Just be kind. This, I believe, is Igor Babushkin. So he was the guy that Elon hired however many months ago to be on the AI team. Is this the code of conduct? Be excellent to each other. Is that just one line? So we'll dive deep into this. But before we do, let me just cover some higher end things and then we'll come back. By the way, this person got to give him some credit for doing this. Andrew Keen Gao, and I'll link him in the show notes. So Computer Science at Stanford, Langchang AI, Dropbox, Z Fellow, Z Fellow is it was kind of a community for the most determined technical founders. You know, they got Naval Ravikant on there. They have founder of Netflix, Eventbrite, Figma, Do Not Pay, Tinder, founder of DoorDash, and many, many more. Here's the kind of press release slash blog post from X.ai. And so they're saying base model trained on a large amounts of text data, not fine tuned for any particular task. So again, it's likely that the Grok, the, if you've interacted with Grok in X in Twitter, right? So that's probably a little bit different in the sense that it was fine tuned. And there's probably other code architecture that's hooked up to it, right? Kind of combs through all the tweets that people make to pull out relevant information. Again, I'm kind of assuming there, but this is the, like the base model that you can now fine tune and apply to your own particular task potentially, right? So 314 billion parameter mixture of experts model with 25% of the weights active on a given token. So a mixture of experts, meaning that depending on what you're asking for, it might get routed to a different sort of part of that model which just makes it, you know, faster and cheaper to run and uh, seemingly very, very effective still. So we, we believe OpenAI GPT-4 runs on that. Google Gemini, when they updated to Gemini 1.5, I think they, they used mixture of experts and that really bumped up how well that was running. Mixtrol is a mixture of experts as well. So just to give you an idea, this is roughly kind of the size of these models. So GPT-4, we're estimating it to be 1.76 trillion mixture of experts, right? So it's a, it's a big boy. And Palm 2, 340 billion. We don't know some of the other ones. I mean, a lot of them are not publishing it. This lists Grok at 33 billion, but this was uh, from 2023. So this is, you know, maybe outdated or whatever, but like there's a Llama 2, 7 billion model. 
So I believe this was posted November 2023. So it's a little bit out of date, but I think it gives you a good idea of where Grok is. So it's not one of the bigger models. It's in line with a lot of the other models that are kind of behind GPT-4. All right, so let's dive in a little bit. So 304 billion parameters, mixture of eight experts. So with mixture of experts, we're at the, the parameter count is when we add all of the experts together. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison to just one model that has that is just kind of like one thing. So like Mixtral represents theirs as eight times 7 billion. So eight experts times, you know, around 7 billion each. So the total is closer to 50 billion, but but that's not really the same thing as a 50 billion parameter model. That's just one whole model. So tokenizer vocab size is uh, similar to GPT-4 and they list the embedding size, 64 transformer layers. The people that want to really dig deep into this certainly should follow this tweet. We're not going to cover everything line by line here, but it looks like two experts out of eight selected per token. So depending on what the use case is, different experts are pulled in to, to answer that question and something about 8-bit quantization for the weights. So here's kind of a chart that represents the size in parameters. So parameters are kind of the synapses in our brain. I think that's fair to say it's analogous to that. So, right. So when we're comparing it to other open source LLMs, right? So we have the Mistral 7B, Mixtral, which, you know, the 46 billion or whatever, right? We have the Llama 65 billion and here's Grok. So it's four times bigger than the second biggest one. And as some people pointed out, you know, don't click on the link. This is the entire thing. You have to, right, to use the torrent to get that. So that's Igor Babushkin. So he is, he was hired by Elon Musk to work on XAI. And once Grok posted the weights, uh, ChatGPT, the app says, stole my whole joke, right? This whole idea of weights in bio. And Elon Musk continues with, tell us more about the open part of OpenAI. Somewhere in there, he was also saying that Sam Altman runs this account. So I'm not sure if he changed that part or not. So shots fired. So this of course is huge for the open source community for progress with building open source models. Somebody with the resources and connections and access to talent that Elon Musk has being able to create something like this and then just making it free and accessible for everyone in the world is a big, big deal. And there's no putting that cat back in the bag because at this point, it's likely that that has been downloaded across all parts of the world, making it harder and harder to prevent people from using these. Now, across the world, a lot of governments right now are deciding how to best approach regulating AI. Some want to completely outlaw open AI, as in what Elon Musk is doing here, right? Weights in bio and then just dropping a torrent link. In fact, in the U.S., there has been discussion of potentially giving jail sentences to people that, that do what Elon Musk just did. Now, that's not a law or anything, but it is being discussed. So this is from time.com. So there was a report that was commissioned by the State Department in November 2022 as part of a federal contract worth quarter of a million, according to public records. It was written by Gladstone AI, a four-person company that runs technical briefings on AI for government employees. And I, I believe this is that same report, the headline that, that references the same report, or there might be a few different ones, but it's saying here, U.S. must move decisively to avert extinction level threat from AI, government commission report says. And so the report recommends setting a certain threshold so the companies can't train anything more powerful than GPT-4 and Google Gemini, and for those companies to require permission to train and deploy new models. And authorities should also urgently consider outlawing the publication of the weights or inner workings of powerful AI models for under open source licenses with violations possibly punishable by jail time. So that's kind of an important thing to understand in all of this, that there's some factions that want this to be illegal, punishable by jail time. And they're saying it's because of safety, right? Some sort of a extinction level event. But certainly this would really benefit the corporations that have political pull, that have invested a lot of money into building these models. And this would basically outlaw any competition, anybody to use the free open source models. If that was the case, we would all be reliant on these large tech corporations to have access to AI. And of course, we would have to pay them. They could you know, design the AI to reflect whatever worldview they wanted to reflect. 
and their wealth and power and status would grow. Their ability to build the world as they see fit would grow. And things like this, open source AI is sort of the counterbalance to that. That's what Elon Musk is talking about when he's saying that we need more open source stuff. So this power isn't just concentrated in the hands of the few. So that's it for me. We'll do a follow-up when we have more information. As people download this thing, it's massive. Let me know what you think about this. Is Elon Musk living up to the promises that he's made? Do you think he's doing the right thing by open sourcing Grok? It sounds like as he keeps developing it, he will continue open sourcing it. Now that's too wealthy sort of American influences, Facebook slash Meta and, you know, Elon Musk and the various companies that he have kind of throwing their hat in the open source AI ring. Yeah. Let me know what you think. And we have Sam Altman posted this just a few hours before Grok dropped. He's saying this is the most interesting year in human history, except for all the future years. And whatever the case, I think he's spot on about that. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.